During the American Civil War, many different types of bullets were in use. Firearms were in full evolution and new technical solutions were continuously tested. Let's dive into this interesting subject with the help of our friends at Militaria Reviewed, a channel that reviews American Militaria from the Civil War to modern times. Have a look and hang around because it's a channel that definitely deserves attention. Link in the comments below. During the American Civil War, hundreds of different types of bullets were used, with many individual variations between manufacturers. These bullets were either produced domestically, imported from overseas, or made in the field using handheld bullet molds. Because there were so many different types being produced, as well as local manufacturers often having variations in their design of a particular bullet, there are endless varieties to collect. Now to get something out of the way real quick, I'm often asked why Civil War bullets are white. Now the white is simply an oxidation of the lead that these bullets are made from. You can see it poking through here. The original material is just a dark, dull gray. That white would not have been on there during the Civil War, but because these have been in the ground for over 150 years, that tends to develop over time. The first bullet we're going to look at is here on the left. This is the Manet ball, named after its inventor. Now this is arguably the most famous bullet of the Civil War, and was used by both the North and South. Now some of the features of this are three grooves. Now these grooves would have held grease to aid in the loading of the round. If you look at the base here, it is open, and that is so when the rifle is fired, gas enters that conical chamber and causes it to, the walls of it to expand outwards and contact the rifling to stabilize the bullet during flight. Now this would have originally been in a paper cartridge that would have gone around the entire bullet and had powder in the base, and now the powder in the bullet would obviously have been loaded separately. In the middle here is an infield round. This is .577 caliber. I forgot to mention the uh, Manet ball is .58 caliber. Now this was a British design, and it's similar to the Manet ball, except for it does not have the grease rings. It also does have a conical chamber in the base for gas expansion. Now these again were used by both the Union and Confederacy, but the infield rifles in general are more famous for their Confederate use. On the right here, we have a Gardner bullet. Now this was a bullet that was solely used by the Confederacy. Now this is pretty interesting, mainly for one special reason. Instead of this bullet being enclosed by a cartridge, the cartridge was actually attached to the base. So if you can see, it looks like there's two rings. If you look at the base of the bullet, the paper would have been compressed between those two rings. Now, one of the main problems with this system was it obviously made it easier for the bullet to become detached from the cartridge itself. The Gardner bullet was produced in both 58 and 69 caliber variations, with this example being in 58. Interesting, isn't it? Again, a big thank you to Military Reviewed for letting us use their material. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.